Welcome back for another video. It's been a chaotic week in the FPL landscape. Two transfers were already made for the first minus four hit of the season. Let's run through how the team's shaping up for Gameweek 17 along with the transfers made. Start with a quick look back at how last game it went. 60 points all out, which was a nice green arrow to rank 171k. Quite surprised to get the green arrow given Salah and Son were the only two to actually return. Captain Salah of 26 and of course Son of 17. I had a gut feeling that Turner would get a run of games again, as Vlacadimos had minus 4.5 expected goals and target prevented from his 5 games played and Forrest were on a really poor run of results so changes were needed and they got a respectable draw against Wolves. A little risky to bet against the Newcastle ownership and defence but in the end just a single point gained over Dubravka. Nothing to write home about but it all counts. The biggest surprise was Haaland missing out entirely. Pep says he's got stress in his foot. Assuming that it's a stress fracture, it could lead to a spell on the sidelines for a couple of weeks minimum. And of course, there's been some other bizarre developments which we'll talk about later in this video. So Archer's two points also subbed on. No clean sheets between Pinnock, Maguire and Simicass. Palmer picked up his fourth yellow card of the season. He really needs to do us all a favour and avoid a fifth, as there's non-stop injuries and rotation at the moment. Let's get into how the team looks for Gameweek 17. In case you missed it, Scout have just launched a store and they're doing a premium membership gift card for £25 worth £41. That's membership for the entire remainder of the season. Perfect Christmas gift for a friend that plays FPL or treat yourself while the discount's available. They've also launched some great merch available in the same store. Click the link below to check it all out. In gold, the Bravka returns to the starting 11, home to Fulham. There were recent rumours that he's carrying a shoulder injury and he wasn't spotted in training ahead of the Champions League game against AC Milan. As usual, Howe gave absolutely nothing away when he was pressed on it. He said, it's two days after the game, so obviously trying to manage players. And he added, we'll see who's fit tomorrow. Just as well turns back into the Forest team, worst case scenario if he's needed. The defence is Pedro Porro, Saliba and Simicas. Porro joins the team in place of Cabore. This one was an early transfer to catch his price rise and replace someone that he never really wants to be playing in Cabore. Haven't lost a lot of value early in the season on the likes of Shaw, Gabra and Mubama. I've played a lot more aggressively recently to recover some lost money. He's now for Spurs, which is going to be needed. We're back to the chaotic schedule again. With Gameweek 17 on Friday, Gameweek 18 6 days later, Gameweek 19 5 days later and then Gameweek 20 4 days later. A decreasing gap between Gameweeks as the month draws on. We mentioned in yesterday's transfers video that since Madison was sidelined of injury, among defenders, Porro's top for chances created, shots taken, touches in the penalty area, and expected goal involvement. Was hoping Saliba would get a rest in the Champions League given Arsenal had top of their group secured already, but he started the game, as did Gabriel. Pretty much everyone else got rest. Saliba was subbed off at 61 minutes, Gabriel played the full 90. He's home to Brighton on Sunday, and Arsenal have been given a 37.5% chance of a clean sheet for that one. Simicast is home to Man United, who could be staring down the barrel at three losses on the bounce in all competitions. United missing Fernandes with suspension, and in the Champions League match versus Bayern, both Maguire and Shaw went off injured. If they don't make the weekend, we could be looking at a back line like Wan-Bissaka, Evans, Varane and Dallow, or maybe Regulon in left back. Liverpool have been given a 34% chance of a clean sheet for that one. Liverpool have already secured first place in the Europa League group, so the hope is that Klopp rotates and gives a few youngsters a run out. It would be the logical thing to do and save Simicast for the weekend. The midfield is Palmer, Saka, Gordon, Salah and Son. Despite Sheffield United's improvements under Wilder, I'm expecting a reaction from Chelsea after the defeat to Everton and I'm expecting them to put a few past Sheffield United. Palmer had a pretty quiet game at Everton, he has done in recent weeks. He took one decent shot from range which tested Pickford. He's still a crucial player for Chelsea though, and he's still great value for 5.5 mil. Not too late to pick him up if you're in the market for a cheap mid. Saka got his rest in the Champions League and he faces a Brighton side who is still yet to keep a clean sheet this season, with 28 goals conceded. He's on track for another 200 plus point season. Brighton travelled to the Emirates after Europa League tie on Thursday, and they're still suffering heavily with injuries, with Vestupin and Lamptey, Webster, March, Fatih, Welbeck and Isiso all sidelined. Gordon very close to returning against Spurs last game week, squaring the ball to Izak, which looked a certain goal if not for a crucial last ditch touch by Davies. He's looked knackered recently, as has many of the Newcastle players with a lack of bench options available to Howe. Barnes is reportedly nearing a return, who is an option in left wing. We'll give Gordon the next three game weeks minimum and then make a call whether to hold beyond that, after which point they do have Liverpool, Man City and then Villa. Salah captain this week, looking an even better pick if Shaw and Maguire don't make the fixture at Anfield. Especially Shaw, he would have been up against Salah. Maguire's looked a much improved player recently, and of course he won Player of the Month for November. Shaw a big boost when he returned as well. 
It is surprising that Ten Hag gave him four straight 90 minutes immediately after returning from injury. With Bruno also out, everything points towards Liverpool winning this one in their bid for the title. They can extend their run at the top of the table with a win. Salah's 14.6 expected goal involvement ranks only second to Haaland this season, and Salah's 13 big chances created is best in the league. Sun Vice Captain, who travels to Nottingham Forest for the first game of the game week on Friday night. He actually leapfrogged Haaland last game week for points this season, and his 113 points is second only to Salah's 127. Really nice block of fixtures for Spurs now. The home to Everton, and then away to Brighton, and then home to Bournemouth after Friday's game. Another reason Pedro Porro joined the team. On to the front two, which is Solanke and Watkins. So Haaland's left the team and Solanke's come in. Again, an early transfer to try and catch price rises. As we're all aware, managers aren't incentivized to give anything away, and it's led to situations where they're even lying or twisting the truth in press conferences. Reading between the lines, Pep's statement that he's back on Thursday means that he's with the group who are currently in Serbia without him, rather than back and 100% fit. Historically, FPL Insider Trading has actually become a pretty reliable source of info. In case you missed it, in Haaland's circle of acquaintances, they all sold him in their FPL teams. His dad, brother, girlfriend and his mates, they all dropped him before the looting game. Pretty much everyone else in his mates league also sold him, so word got around between them. Some of them with elite rank finishes as well. So the argument that his family are casual FPL players falls flat on that logic. Stepping back and looking at the full picture, we're not going to get a clear answer from Pep. But in my eyes, there's no way they all make these transfers with Haaland back for Palace at home, where he's the clear standout captain. Haaland not even in the Champions League squad, and Alvarez reportedly doesn't start. Everything about it says to me that he's injured, and we won't see him till Gamic 19 at the earliest. It's increasingly hard to find an edge in FPL as everyone's getting better and better, but this one really feels like a massive opportunity given his ownership. And it is a risk that could absolutely backfire, but it's one I've decided to take on. I'd love to know what you'll think about it, and if you're holding on to him, or you're selling. And lastly, my bench was very weak, so replacing Caboro, Pedro Porro, and also Haaland, who may miss the game, improves the squad and probably worth the hit. Of course, if Haaland plays in Gamic 17, then a bad decision, unless Solanke matches him against Luton. So these moves have at least afforded me Pinnock on the bench, when otherwise it would have been Archer auto subbing on, and Maguire's probably out. If there's any unexpected rotation, then I'm comfortable enough with a little bit of depth on the bench again. And again, referring back to the point at the very start of the video, the FPL schedule is about to get crazy again. From Friday, there's only 5 days about football over the 16 day span that's left in the month. On the bench it's Turner, Pinnock, Archer and Maguire. So this has left me in a position I've never been in before with 8.1 million in the bank. I can actually afford another Solanke if they'll let me have 16 players. Dependent on further Haaland news, that could be spread around nicely. For example, Pinnock could go to Trippier or Trent in game 18. The best case scenario for my team would be that Haaland's out longer than Gamic 19, after which point Salah and Son make way before they leave for AFCON and the Asia Cup, and then Haaland comes back in after. If Haaland's expected back by Gamic 19, then it's a 2 or 3 Gamic run with Solanke, and then I'll hop back to Haaland. With so much money in the bank right now, absolutely every transfer in the game is possible, so that's exciting for Gamic 18. Make sure you subscribe to find out whether this ends up a disaster decision or not. Thanks very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and see you soon for the next one.